More Spanish rapier versus katana, how does the rapierist stop from being killed by the crazy samurai with the katana? Hey folks, Matt Eaton here, Scholar Gladiatore. So I did a recent video, if you haven't seen that already, there's a link below to that video, basically looking at Spanish rapier versus Japanese katana. Um, and you know, this isn't a crazy comparison because in fact they did come up against each other. We absolutely know they did in the late 1500s and 1600s. There were plenty of occasions when people using Japanese swords came up against people using various types of European swords. Now I had a bunch of really cool comments underneath the last video and they have inspired this video. And this video is fundamentally looking at advice for the rapierist to successfully kill or at least deal with, incapacitate the Japanese swordsman without then getting cut down. And this is a really pertinent and an important point that came up in the comments underneath that video because of course just because you run someone through with a rapier doesn't mean that it's an insta kill. In fact if for people really know what they're talking about, even shooting people doesn't mean that. Anybody who's looked at the uh, Moros and the Philippine War um, and the US adoption of the Colt 1911 and the 45 uh, round uh, moving away from the 38 will know that shooting people multiple times if they're charging at you with an edged weapon, you know, there's the 20 fo 21 foot rule um, that my friends over at the AHF had ha have had a lot of fun with. The fact is if someone's running at you with an edged weapon, you can shoot them a number of times and they can still stab or chop you. Uh, and this of course happened within British uh, colonial warfare as well, uh, most famously in India, but also in Afghanistan, Sudan and other places as well. So fundamentally the issue here is advice for the rapierist to not get subsequently cut down by the katana because we accept given as i pointed out the huge reach advantage of the rapier over the katana the rapier is going to hit first and not only is it going to hit first it's reliably going to hit first because no matter what the katana wielder does um, to try and get past that point they are not going to have a particularly high success rate now i was somewhat um, uh, uh, my, my heart was warmed by the fact that quite a few people in the comments actually practice both japanese and european swordsmanship and completely agreed with what i said uh, because of course they use rapiers they use katanas or at least uh, kendo shinai or or bokken um, and they pretty much agreed with my conclusion that definitely under normal circumstances both pe pe people being of similar skill the person with the much longer weapon is going to make contact first and not only as I say not only are they going to make contact uh, because of the extra reach but also because of the way that the weapons handle the fact is that this rapier is got a very nimble and quick to maneuver point so even if the katana wielder manages to get a cross or a bind on my sword I can disengage it and get it somewhere else as they start charging in and of course you can retract the weapon it doesn't have a fixed reach you can bring it back to your body to shorten that way that way you can even half sword it if you need to um, so you can shorten the reach to stab them again even if they get past the point once you can retract and have another go at them the katana wielder however has a big task on the hands because not only do they have the shorter weapon they also have the less nimble weapon yes it's very very powerful cutting and will chop through all sorts of things and lop things off but the fact is they have to get close enough to do that so here's the quandary how does the rapier user protect themselves from that person who's presumably been skewered and stabbed as they come in and chop down the rapierist. And this is a real problem. Now, this also isn't a, a novel or unusual problem. We actually have to deal with this quite a bit. Uh, we deal with this when we're fighting spear versus longsword, for example, or arming sword. We also deal with it when we're doing rapier or small sword against people using saber or back sword, things like this. So this is something that we experience in HEMA. And so here are three basic bits of advice. If you're using a rapier and a skewering weapon, which will make contact first, but won't insta kill the enemy, it will run them through. They might die 30 seconds later, but in those 30 seconds, they're going to be trying to take your head off with a sharp katana. So the first piece of advice is run away but run away while still keep fighting so backpedal essentially keep your distance distance management so fundamentally you can skewer the opponent and so long as you retract your weapon back here or pull it back out again you can skewer them again or you can guard as need be against their their cuts their after blows that are going to come after the fact that they've been skewered 
So first of all, whenever you do skewer them, it doesn't matter whether it's in their arm or their chest or their face or their thigh, wherever you go, immediately retract the blade out and get it ready to do something again, whether it's skewer them again, for example, in the head, which might stop them from running forwards, or parry if you need to. But that can only be done if they're charging forwards by you running backwards as you do it. If they are charging you down, you've got to move backwards or at least tangentially move around, move in a circle if needs be, if you don't have enough space to run backwards. Keep your distance such that they cannot reach you with their weapon, or at least by the time that they do reach you, your weapon is now free again in order for you to parry. Next piece of advice is nail them in a place that either prevents them running forwards <laughs> or disables or incapacitates their ability to keep attacking you. So one example of that is, if I just put the rapier down for a second, if a person is coming at you with their sword like this, then nailing them through one of their arms might have enough incapacitating effect in order to prevent them uh, following through with that blow. However, I think that overall that is a risky approach and I would rather advise you to thrust for the upper chest or face or possibly throat as well. Okay, So if someone's charging at you with a katana, if you can nail them in the face, it's relatively unlikely they're going to be able to continue moving forwards with a sword sticking out of their face because quite simply it'll be stuck in their head. Um, now I know, th how do I know this? Quite simply from stabbing people in the fencing mask. If you stab someone in the fencing mask, yes okay if a blade enters a body a person can physically move up the blade to an extent. If it's through a leg, if it's through an arm, not so much if it's in the head. <laughs> uh, you are unlikely to keep moving towards the opponent if a blade is in your skull, largely because you, phys <laughs> you physically can't because it will get stuck at the back of the skull, but also just sort of the effect, the, the effect of having a blade stuck in the middle of your face would, I think, make it quite difficult to keep moving forward. The chest is less surefire, although the chest might be in some ways more likely to kill them, especially if you hit the heart. It can run out of the body. In fact, if we look at treatises, we actually see rapiers passing right the way through the body here. And a person could run far enough up the blade um, in order to still hit the person and cut them down so both people are going to die. Of course, this is why boar spears have a cross piece on them instead of a typical spear, because boars do this. So I would say chest is a good target in general with a rapier, but against someone who's charging against you a little bit less sure fire. So I would actually say go for the face, go for the throat and be ready to run backwards and by distance, by time if you possibly can do, so that by the time they do eventually catch up with you, if they catch up with you, they will have had a few more seconds of the damage that you've done to them by stabbing them in one of those places. Now the last point is a little bit more complex and it relies on you understanding two fundamental fencing principles. One is thrusting in opposition and the other one is tempting an attack in order to parry riposte. Okay? Now why have I bunched those two together? Because actually the end effect is somewhat similar. You kind of lock out the opponent's weapon at the same time as hitting them. So first example is, if we just take a simple example of the person with the katana charging in, ignoring what you're doing, charging in and just coming with a straight downwards cut from one angle. It could be straight down the middle actually, but anyway, a downwards cut. Okay? If they are doing this, one option you always have, and bearing in mind that you've got the longer weapon, is to cover the line that their cut is coming down at. So if their cut's coming down here, to place essentially a bar in the way, a cross, a parry, at the same time as skewering them. This is what we call single tempo, as opposed to due tempo. We're going to look at due tempo in a minute. So due tempo, tempo would be parrying riposte, single tempo would be parry and riposte in one move. You might wonder why did we not just do single tempo all the time and it's quite sim simply because it's harder to pull off and because of the angles of the blade required to do it, it's a little bit higher risk. It's less likely to have the desired effect. Okay, But the single tempo response, in other words to parry and riposte in one movement, Okay, so cross the line of the incoming attack and put the blade in at the same time is always one option. And at that moment of you planting your blade into them, their blade will be stopped around here. And bear in mind, you cannot cut through a rapier. Don't think that a katana or any other sword can do that 
because you can't. We tested it years ago. Look it up in my old videos. We tried to cut, we had tried to break through a rapier with a long sword and completely failed. And we spent the whole evening doing it and failed. Okay, you can't cut through a rapier. So, and bear in mind also you can defend with a hilt, with, especially with a cup hilt. So you place the hilt in the way as the, as the blow comes in. And bear in mind you can also buy distance. So we look at the previous lessons here. You're moving off, you're planting your sword in the way at the same time as nailing them in the face, chest or neck at the same time as parrying. Now what's the due tempo to, uh, option? So that would be buying distance. As they come in with their blade, you move off, you cross their blade, and then repost. But notice that in doing this, you will end up covering the line to where their blade is. Okay, so the end result, kind of the same. You end up locking out their blade at the same time as nailing them in wherever your point goes. And finally, you might ask, well, what if they try and cut you again and again? Well, in that case, you just parry and repost again and again. So if they come at you cutting and you go for a single tem tempo response and you nail them, you thrust them in the chest and you lock out their blade, they pull back their katana and go for another cut. Well, at that point, you can now switch into your parry repost. They go for another cut, parry repost, parry repost. And you can do this the whole time. I can't do it here because I've got doors behind me, but you do the whole time if you need to, if they're moving forwards, you move back. So what you do, it's back to the first lesson again, you maintain distance. So you can do all of these things, whether it's single tempo responses or parry repost in whatever way you need to do it, at the same time as buying distance. So as they charge forwards, you charge either backwards in a circle or backwards in a straight line, depending on what you need to do and what the environment's like so that they never get to you and the whole time you're poking holes in them from a distance at which they can't reach you with their shorter katana. I hope that's been interesting and once again, I refer back to my previous video, I don't want you to think that I'm just trashing and ragging on the katana here. This is a good weapon for its intended purpose and in some situations this is a better weapon than the rapier is, for example in a built up uh, environment in a small enclosed environment or indeed in a melee where you can chop around and slice around and you wouldn't be able to move very easily with a long rapier. Um, and there's all sorts of other situations as well. I would, for fighting in armor, for example, this is a better weapon than the, um, than the rapier is. So this is a very good weapon. I just think one-on-one, -on -one, this is at the big disadvantage to the rapier. But maybe in a future video, if there's any appetite for it, and post below if you're interested in that, maybe I'll look at some of the ways that I consider that the katana wielder could try and get the better of the rapier user. Even though I think the rapier's got the advantage, there are certain things that I think the katana user should be trying to do if they want to try and even the score. And I'm not just thinking about throwing their weapon, although I might be thinking about throwing their weapon. But anyway, let's look at that in a future video if there's any appetite for it. I thank you a lot for watching. I have been Matt Easton and I will continue to be. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.